Developing a Stream Deck plugin? Here's where logging is your best friend. When building a plugin, logging is crucial for tracking your code's behavior and diagnosing issues. Think of it as a detailed map of your plugin's journey. With logs, you can track user interactions, monitor performance, and catch errors early. If something goes wrong, like an unresponsive button or a failed action, logs help you to pinpoint exactly where and why it happened. So troubleshooting without logs becomes a real guessing game because logs provide a clear and real-time feedback so you can fix your issues faster and improve your plugin's reliability. They are also invaluable for performance tuning. By analyzing log data, you can identify slow responses, optimize resource usage, and enhance the overall user experience. So whether you're debugging or optimizing, never underestimate the power of logging. It's the key to creating a polished and high-performing Stream Deck plugin. So log early and log often. So how do we do logging when we develop our plugin? First of all, what we need to know is where does Stream Deck store our logs? And in our plugin folder, we have a folder that is the log folder here. And you can already see this is being ignored by Git, which is good. We don't want to commit any logs to our Git repository. And you can see that logs are always iterated through. So zero is the most recent log and the current log that we have. So even if I press something here, you can see new logs are being added. And then log one to nine are from the previous life cycles of the plugin. And whenever I do a hot restart or a regular restart of the plugin, we will get a new iteration here. And we can see that in a second. So if I just um, save this file again, we can see that our log zero will be restarting. There you go. And now log one has everything that was previously in log zero. So as you can already see, we have a timestamp here. We have a log level and here we have debug, trace. Um, and this is quite important. So what we can set in our plugin.ts is streamdeck.logger. So streamdeck.logger is the standard logger that will write into those files. And I would highly recommend that we use this um, logger that is provided by the SDK. So we can set the default level to the minimum that we want to be logged. So if we, for example, set this to debug, we will see that everything that previously was available here on trace won't be available anymore. There you go. Now only you will get um, debug, info, warning, and error. What this means is the entire communication between your plugin and the Stream Deck SDK is going to be within the trace logging. And I would say you will need this if you need to see, okay, does communication work or not? So going back to this one here, you can see in trace connection, you can see, okay, which device it is. You have a Stream Deck Plus, for example, connected. And you can, for example, down here, you can see the context. You can see the action that was triggered. Um, and you can also see, okay, which event was sent from the plugin or from the property inspector to your plugin. And that is, this is quite useful when it comes to, okay, I need to figure out what is going on and what is happening. Same here, for example, will appear or title parameter did change. So really, really handy. On a regular basis, I would say you will not need trace logging. Debug logging will be completely fine. If we go to info, then we will reduce the logs even further. So going in here, plugin is restarting. Yeah, so far no logs has been written. Now that I've pressed the key, we can see, okay, there's a new info in here and that's it. For developing purposes, I would recommend going to debug. Once you ship the plugin, info should be fully sufficient. And so how do we log then when we go in our plugin and in our TypeScripts? So what I usually do is I create a logger from the Stream Deck logger. So this is a concept here and I can give this a scope. And then we can just use the logger object wherever we need it. So for example, I, if I want to log an info line, I can say, okay, logger info and this this new count 
is what we are seeing here. You can see the scope and you can see the new count. And this is really, really helpful. And if we, for example, want to lock something in debug, we can do that as well. So for example, if we say, okay, uh, on key down logger dot debug, debug message, we can, we can do that as well. So now as soon as I hit it, you can see, okay, I'm getting debug info, debug increment and my debug message or here, the previous log message. And then we can do pretty much the entire same thing going with logger. So we can say warn or we can say and once we do this and we hit our key, different levels. And so this is the five levels of logging I can use. And obviously, depending on what is happening and what you want to write into the logs, you should use the corresponding log levels. And this is how you use logging in your Stream Deck plugin development. Have fun logging and hopefully quick solving your issues. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to learn more about plugin development, there are further videos I will link here in a playlist. So have a look at those. And if you have any other questions, just let me know so I can answer them in future videos. Thank you very much.